very good. The blessing there. Well, I'm all blessed out. Now, unlike my final guest this evening, who's blessed with more talents than you'd find in the biblical Powerball. Star of stage and screens of all sizes, the burning question about him is, is he a detective or just a plain pervert? And how does he get his hair to look so damn perfect? Please welcome a man who is as American as the cherry pie he professes to detest, Mr. Carl McLachlan. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, pervert, huh? Well, I... <laughs> they see the films, they might think that. That's I a... know, it's true. That's the kind of stuff. Now, kind of first of all, me. I've got to say, I'm kind of... Uh, dis <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed, because, frankly, you, you... When I watch Twin Peaks and all the other stuff you've done, you look kind of geeky, and here you turn up in real life, and you're, you're a good-looking man. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. That's, a, that's as far as it goes. Good-looking man, too. No, that's OK. No. We're going to get some... Uh... It's a bank holiday fever, that's what uh... it is. Uh, then let me, well, I want to start with something a bit seriously, because yeah. when I was out last summer, I was uh, doing a, sh a programme at David Lynch, and I couldn't get around to interviewing you. You, you, you were kind of tired up, I know you were doing the Twin Peaks stuff. Right. But I, I, I got maybe the feeling that you were a bit worried about being too closely connected with Lynch, as being seen as like just an appendage of his work and not uh, as a performer and an actor and a creative person in your own Yes, mind. I was somewhat, Jonathan. I mean, I went through that uh, until I did the, the Doors and worked with Oliver Stone, and really, I got that out of my system. But for a while, I was frustrated. Uh, David is, is great, and I love working with him, and we have a great relationship, but uh, too, many, too much of a good thing, you know, sometimes you need to get out and do other yeah. stuff. How did you actually meet uh, Lynch in the first place? Oh, a strange story. I was in Seattle doing some theater, and I was seen by a casting lady who was casting for Dune, and she brought me down to Los Angeles to meet David. And uh, the first time I met him, we talked about everything but the movie. We talked about red wine, we talked about the Northwest, we talked about, you know, girls. Yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we hit it off immediately. So what did Lynch say about girls? Because I'd quite like to know yeah. what is that. <laughs> Tight sweaters, man. Tight sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> it's all there on the screen, isn't it? It is, it really. Is. Uh, now, now what, about, what about Lynch? Because you obviously know him quite well. Does he ever drop that kind of, uh, that, that front he has of that kind of gee whiz, all American boy? No, he never has. Not in front of me, anyway. Maybe the privacy of his home. But that's the persona he presents to the world, you know? Yeah. And his, in his mind, of course, it's a whole different story. Let's talk about June a little bit, because June was, of course, the first time you worked together. Yeah. Huge movie. Must have been a lot of pressure for you, because the first time you're out there on, on the screen, it's as the star. Yeah. in not only a hugely expensive film, but a kind of long-awaited. Well, I was real naive about it. That was my first picture, my first film, so I didn't know what to expect. I thought, oh, this is the way movies are made. Yeah. But uh, it gave me an opportunity to meet some great people um, and work with them. And uh, people from here, Francesca Annis, Patrick Stewart. The great cast Sean Phillips. Oh, man. But okay. sadly, then, the film, you know, you'd have thought, all oh, that great talent, it sadly went on to be like a huge flop, didn't it? It did well financially. It was, I think it's set up, you know, anything by Dino De Laurentiis, and it was hyped <laughs> as a $40 million, blah, 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 yeah. you know. He set himself, uh, set ourselves up. You won't be working with Dino again, I, I don't guess. think so. No. <laughs> no. I've got my kneecap protectors on, man. I want yeah. <laughs> that, of course, is just a light-hearted reference, and we're not trying to <laughs> imply anything whatsoever, <laughs> despite his Italian connections. No, right, no, well, uh, matter of fact, I'm meeting Italian tonight, so it's all right. So that, now, now then Blue Velvet followed that, of course, uh, but, but not yeah. immediately. I mean, did the fact that June didn't work so well, did that put the clappers on your career you for? It did. I was in a real bad way for a while. Yeah, it took me a long time. I didn't work for two years from the making of June until Blue Velvet. It's a tough time for me. And then the, the, the next person who, to ask you back was David Lynch again. Again, right. Who'd been responsible for you not working for two years. Right, right. I figured he owed me, you know. <laughs> but do you have any reservations? Because that part, obviously the film, was a very curious one, a strange one, a very powerful film. Mm. Uh, but I imagine in the early stages you would have seen that script and thought, well, how's this going to be uh, received? Uh, it, well, yeah, I, was, I wasn't worried about it so much as I was excited about it, which kind of concerned me, actually. But I, 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 the idea of going in and doing that was, uh, was pretty great, especially with Isab uh, Is uh, Rossellini, Isabella Rossellini. You started mumbling then, you got uh, a bit... Blah, 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 blah. Well, come on, anyway, you know, Isabella Rossellini. Yeah, well, uh, now, normally we, we kind of only ask this kind of sexist question of our female guests, but you did the nude scene in that movie. Absolutely. Now, that's my butt. Well, now, was that a difficult thing to do, to strip off in front of all those hairy technicians and guys? And, yeah. <laughs> and Isabella Rossellini, one Rossellini. of the most beautiful women in the world there. I know, well, that wasn't so bad, no? <laughs> and, uh, what was her reaction when you slipped out of your vest and got your... your... You got my knickers down? Oh, well, I don't know. She, uh... You don't know? I don't know. I wasn't... I was, it was a feeling thing as opposed to a, <laughs> a, a looking thing. <laughs> Let's move on to Twin Peaks, shall we? Why don't we? Right on. You are you still doing more Twin Peaks? Because there have been, I think, three series. We've had the, we're, we're watching the second one yeah. here at the moment. Uh, that one is... I finished that about a month and a half ago, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen next season. They haven't decided yet. Because it, it was almost cancelled, wasn't it? Because the, it was such a hot thing and then it cooled off a bit. They took us off the air for a few weeks and uh, the fans were so vehement uh, to bring it back. They sent uh, the person responsible all sorts of things in the mail. Logs they sent, plastic cherry pie, bags of coffee, 
Barbie dolls wrapped in cellophane. It was amazing. They, they are odd fans, aren't they? They are they? odd fans, absolutely. And then, and then now, as you said, you bunk away from Lynch a little bit. It's the, the Oliver Stone movie of the doors. How, how did working with Stone compare to working with Lynch? Are they different kind of directors? Completely different. Completely different men. Uh, Oliver is much more uh, physical in his, in his approach, confrontational, visceral, and David is much more in his head, more cerebral, more manipulative. Uh, two very interesting uh, directors. So when you said confrontation, all of a sudden, did, did, did you have a confrontation with yeah, him? Yeah, sure, yeah, I get right in my face. And then the guy, you know, you sort of give it right back to him. But he's, he's bigger than I am. So yeah. I, I hit him twice as hard as he hit me. And, and, and would you work with him again? Though? Would you Absolutely. Absolutely. He feels so strongly about what he does and what he makes, uh, I'd work with him in a second. I haven't seen the film. I know that uh, this being back on Monday, it's been out for a couple of weeks now, but I haven't had a chance to see it yet. <laughs> 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 so let's, uh, let's have a look at the clip. This is the moment when you sit down, you're playing Wayne Manzarak, of course. Right. And you sit down with Jim Morrison. I think this is the moment when you decide to form the band. Right. You write this? You got others in here? A bunch, man. I, I have a whole concert in my head, you know. I see it all, Ray, like... Uh, what the hell happened to you in the desert, man? You know, ecstasy. Get a rock and roll band together, make a million so bucks. stuff, Ray. Got tons of stuff. Ooh, about to explode, Jim. You can feel it in the air. People want to fight or love or kill. Vietnam is right out there, man. Sides are being chosen. Everything's gonna play, man. The planet is screaming for change, Morrison. We gotta make the myths. There are the great origins, man, like when Dionysus arrived in Greece, made all the women mad, leaving their homes and dancing off into the mountains. Should be great golden copulations in the streets of L.A., man. We should call ourselves Dionysus, man. I got a name. Doors. I mean, the doors in your mind. Actually, doors of perception. Acid. Great. Well, the quotes from William Blake, actually. <laughs> Now, some of the reviews have been mixed about the movie. I know that. It's not been as received, perhaps, as well as you, you, one might have thought, you know. Well, for, it's for a the... tough story. I don't think it's for everyone. You know, it's a very dark story. And how did you find playing somebody still alive, some guy who's going to go and see his own performance? I loved it. I didn't feel... I felt a responsibility to the man, but I, I loved it. Uh, a lot of the work was done for me already, so... Did you, did you consult him in advance? Did you meet him? Or... I did. I met him a couple times, spoke with him. Uh, a good guy, but he didn't involve himself with the movie. I think that was a, a row he had with Oliver early on, and they decided not to uh, collaborate. So Oliver went in, starting to punch him out or something. Something and, like uh, that, I think, yeah. And, and has, uh, do you know what he makes of the movie since then? Do you know what he thought no. of your performance? Not yet. I don't know. Not sure. I hope he likes it. I mean, I hope he goes with it. And I, and I read somewhere, and I don't know if it's true, that, that you, you actually... You didn't just mime the film, you actually studied and learned the keyboards just for the, for, for the film, is that right? I did, you, absolutely. You brushed it up. Now, I would love to hear you. You would. Do, do a little burst here. Yeah. Yeah. You have a spare organ. What the hell? You think, okay. I'll play my organ, man. Yeah, well, we've got a box organ over there. All right. Time mm. a pack one, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's try this. Um, now, we need some... I've got William from The Blessing here and Luke, and they're going to join in if you want. So, so what are you going to do? Do you have a doors number that you could... Uh, Light my fire. Light my fire. Time to clap in here. Thanks for watching. This bank holiday Monday. And here they are for the first and perhaps the last time. Who knows? Loads of people. Light my fire.
Come a few of 